Hello, today we will look at if Canada really is 58th place in the world, which is nearly the last place in global climate ranking. So we're going to have Pierre say that we are 58th and Stephen Guilbeau saying we're not. And then we're going to have a look at the facts and I will provide suggestions on how it can be improved because the KPI that is used right now is not good at all. And I don't know why Canada puts up, so up for it. So let's have a listen. Eight years, not only is the Prime Minister not worth the cost, he still does not have a climate plan. He said that if Canadians paid his carbon tax, it would save the world. But here are the facts. Canada now ranks 58th out of 63 in climate action. Canada. <laughs> But the leader of the opposition is saying in this house is factually incorrect. So on the own climate change performance index, there Denmark is number one, number one best in the world. Canada is 58th, 58th or the sixth worst in the world. Now, I don't know if you believe that, but that to me, that doesn't make any sense at all on there. And this is these information on the side here is the, the KPI that they use to calculate it. Now, when you look at how they calculate that, um, let's, we're going to have a look at, at Denmark and Canada and what's going on. But greenhouse, greenhouse gas emissions, that a lot depends on manufacturing. China will produce an enormous amount of that because they make stuff and we all benefit from it. The renewable energy, you know, if the country is small and has less population, it's, you can't compare a big country like Canada. And the energy use as well, too, like the size of the country. If it's a big country, cars will drive more for moving stuff around. So that makes a big difference, too, in the climate policy. I mean, I'm guessing that the Canada is wicked because, you know, where is the Canada? It's doing it great, that orange. It just means that, you know, Stephen Guilbeau is a big uh, bulldog and it's all bad. So let's have a look at Denmark. Now this this is the Denmark data, and let me let me let me put a side by side on what's going on here. So Denmark is then on the top, and it shows the energy by how it's created. So from two thousand and five, you see coal was about seventy five percent, and now it's thirty three percent. So I think that's where they get that huge score from. And we're going to put Canada now at the bottom. Got cut off there. Let me slide it over. What's going on here? is that Canada was from six started off at 60% in hydro and nuclear is still green too. There's no emissions on there too, the energy. So even at 60%, Canada started 60% compared to 9% for Denmark. And it went from 60 to about 60. So it's flat. And I think that that's what they're saying. The change has not happened. But when the score was created in the beginning, Canada was just, say, blessed with having hydro dams to begin with. I mean, if that 2005 number went back to 1930 or whatever, where the first dam was built, uh, there would be a great climate change improvement in Canada. And I uh, you know, something they don't brag about here too. You see here the uh, wind and solar, the orange. I'm oh, not the orange. Where is it? The, uh, the coke. This 18 percent. So in 2005, 18 percent of Canada's energy was coal, and now it's eight. So where's that significance? That 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 significance change from coal to the other energies, which look like they are wind and solar. How come they're not highlighting that? I think that the climate change calculation should go back to 1930 or the beginning of like when countries started to produce energy because it's not fair. It's not a good base to start off with like in 2005 comparing these two. You can't do that. So that's something that they're not taking into the mix for starters because also the more usage a country uses depends on the manufacturing. And let's have a look at that as well. Now, what you see on the screen here is a blend of three data sources. One is the total energy used in that country. The other one is the green there is the climate change. And the last one here is the size of the country, because all of these actually should play into the climate change and how well it's doing. And if you look at the countries in the world that are producing energy, if you go down here in the yellow, 
these ones I'm highlighting from Taiwan up to China, that's 80% of the entire world. So that means that Canada is eighth, eighth most energy producer, which is 2%. And if you go way down here, way, way, way down, you have to go back down, way, way, way. Denmark is 60th. They are nothing in the wind, a, a fart in the wind. They are 1 15th of 1%. That's how little energy they produce energy you know th th this so they're, they're taking praise that they went from that percentage of 74 percent coal to 33 percent but the amount of energy they produce is nothing is insignificant this is should not even be included in this calculation and if you go back up here the only countries that should be even in the ballpark are the ones that produce 20 percent or 60 80 percent of the entire world's energy that those are the ones they should look at and even you know if i say something on here to saudi arabia that they produce 1.3 percent that's actually incorrect too because they're the ones that ship the oil to the other country so every country on this list that gets oil from saudi arabia then they burn it for energy that's counting to their energy and bad energy so that's the one that lng would help that's why it would help all the countries and get their score down just like it would back in here, in here. And I will share a link to this Google slide just so that everyone is on the same page. But if, if they energy from Saudi Arabia, the oil, if they, if they switch to LNG, you would actually see an improvement. So you'd see, for example, here, it'd be 74% coal. And then at the end here, it would be LNGs. And that would be a better, lower greenhouse gases. And that would help the uh, score. And how come they don't put that into the mix here at all either? So let's imagine now, let's just look at the 80% of the world. So these countries, 80% of the world's energy. And if you look at it, the number of people, the population, this is why you need to do it. If there's more people, there's they use more energy because, and it depends on the temperature as well too, if it's a colder climate. But if you looked at it, gigawatts per hour per person for that country, Canada would be the best. Look at that, 69%, 69 gigawatts per person per year, per hour. So Canada would be number one. Why don't they make the statistic like this? But then, you know, this is not always that fair either because the two at the bottom here, India and Indonesia, nearly a thousand, like the reason that is so high per person is because they're manufacturing for other people, other countries. They're, they're manufacturing that, ener that energy used to manufacture and ship it around the world. So that's not really too fair either when you look at it because Canada is probably not manufacturing as much stuff, but then, you know, there's a lot of mining too going on or wood. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Now this data was blended, like I said, with the total consumption by that climate change index and the number of square kilometers. And even the square kilometers, like this one right here, South Korea, you know, even though they produce 2%, this is actually looks horrible. If you look at it, this is 2%. And their square kilometers are 100,000 square kilometers. Let me just highlight this. What's really bad about this one is that it's a small country. It produces 2%, just like Canada. You know, per person, you know, they're a little worse. But look at that. They only have 100,000 square kilometers. Like, I'm not even sure how big, how big that is. Big as uh, Nova Scotia or something like that. Like, that's actually really bad. I don't know why they don't take into consideration of that if they're such a small country. And they have a lot of population there too, but they are using more. And, you know, I think what uh, some of it is the manufacturing that's going on there too. And this climate change index here, Canada's the 58th, make that color here. How can India at 6%, nearly 6% of all the energy in the world, be eighth best? I find that incredibly hard. Let's check, how is it possible India is doing that much better and they have way more like this. So this means India should be totally uh, doing actually uh, wicked on on green greenhouse gases. Let's have a look at that one. I, I find that very hard to believe. And all these countries on the screen are the ones that are at least over a million square kilometers. They have to be big countries because the other ones are just useless. There's no reason to compare to some small country that does anything. Let's have a look at India. How do they fit into this mix compared to Canada? Okay, let's have a look at this now, India to Canada. You know, the 16% renewable in 2010, 
and they went to 23% in renewable. So Canada did a 10% increase on renewable. How come, how come India has a phenomenal rate of eight? And this 2030, okay, that's just, you know, Stephen Gilbo kind of math. That doesn't make any sense. If you look at it, looked at it here, this is 18%. Canada removed coal and the six came in here, solar wind. So how come Canada doesn't get a better, just as good as rating as India? You know, how's that possible? They go from 16 to 23. I mean, a 7% increase. And I know they're 8% more. Or, uh, they're a lot more energy that they use. Eight, like 6% of the world. How come How come Canada doesn't get a break on that? Look, look they did, we did just as good as them. I, I don't get why this is. And to tell you the truth of renewables, now I have to look what, what renewables are in India. Let's have a look at that because I find that hard to believe. Well, it actually looks amazing. I'll leave the link in where this came from, but that's actually sweet. Look at that, coal plants, the uh, cyan color here, a turquoise, those are the water dams. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of coal plants here, but uh, it's a pretty nice looking map. And flip it to the layers here, you can actually see. This is actually incredible. This is what the, uh, whatever that climate thing should be doing. This is this is amazing that they have this. So yeah, I guess they are doing a lot of, uh, actually, why did they call it hydro? So that 23% uh, is hydro. How do they get renewable? I don't understand why why can't Canada flip that statistic like that as well? You know, they're called, it's not even the solar, it was hydroelectricity because they have water. They're blessed with water so they can do that. So anyway, the whole scale looks like it is incorrect. They shouldn't be doing that. There's a lot of other things to be taken into account. And yeah, Canada, the climate, you know, it doesn't even need a climate plan by the looks of it. They just need accurate comparable or fair ranking is what they need. And they need someone to be a, a cheerleader for when it's good because it's not. And that's what Steven should be doing. He has his 35 years of experience. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. And all the links will be in the folder. As you can see, everything will be in the slide here that you can look at yourself. And uh, that's it. So have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.